some of you, two of you know me, half of you know me, and half of you don't, not counting Deborah. Um, I'm Martha Peterson. Uh, I'm just gonna start from the beginning. Um, I knew from a very early age that there were other dimensions, that this was only one dimension, and I knew that very, very young. So I didn't grow up as a medium seeing dead people or people who have passed like many other mediums have. But um, I, the flowers talked to me, the trees talked to me, nature talked to me. I saw the fairies and the elementals and um, I was very blessed to have parents who just accepted it and didn't try to talk me out of it or tell me I was crazy, they just accepted it. Um, and I became a hippie and dropped out and I did tune in. Um, and during my years on the commune, I studied herbs, the I Ching, Tarot, astrology, Sufism, um, anything I could find. And, uh, you know, very much a seeking period of time. And then I became a, a PA a physician assistant and went into the world of allopathic medicine, which was a different path. And then I got my master's in public health and went into teaching PAs. And then went back about 2012 to um, mediumship in Connecticut. And then I retired and moved here uh, because my grandmother from the other side came in and kicked me and told me to get back here, and I studied with Gloria Wyken, Gita knows, mm -hmm. um, and got certified as a medium. I've been working as a medium ever since. Uh, all mediums are different. All mediums work differently. All mediums are psychics, but not all psychics are mediums. Okay, the difference is psychics tend to work off of your energy, and people confuse the words. I, I you know, you'll, you'll hear all sorts of words, and, and words are very limiting. So some people call themselves a psychic, and they're actually a medium. Some people will say they're a spiritualist, and that means they're a medium. It, there's, it, it's kind of a, words don't quite always work. So anyway, um, psychics tend to, a true psychic tends to work off of your energy and um, what's going on around you and your past and possibly they t try to tell your future. Uh, but a medium only works with messages from the other side. So they're different. I don't do psychic work unless somebody from the other side gives me some information or something along those lines, and that's because you have free will. So as a psychic, I can tell you, oh, you're gonna buy a red car in April, and it's gonna be a sports car. And with free will, you can get out there and get a blue Chevy pickup truck, because you have free will. And then you say, oh, that psychic's nuts. You know, there's nothing to it, because we have free will. And, uh, I'm also not, I don't even know how to say that. When I space out like this, it's because I'm getting, I'm downloading information. As a tech, you understand that. <laughs> so um, I have to understand what um, Spirit is telling me. So that would be the difference between a psychic and a medium. I still do some tarot, I still do some astrology, etc., etc. I do have a class on Sunday evenings called Seeker Circle. And that purpose of the class is because I think the most important thing in our spiritual journey is to be able to tune in to yourself and to trust yourself. So Deborah teaches how to go to the Akashic Records so that you can do it. You don't have to go to somebody to read them for you. We all have access, if you choose. Nothing wrong with going to somebody else. Um, we also all have the power to connect to people, our loved ones on the other side. Um, we all have that. It's just a matter of practice and faith and exercises, etc. 
questions. The downloads you're getting, are they connected to the building or to the people or? To spirit, what I call spirit. I, I use the term spirit, uh, God turns, the word God can turn people off. I use the word God. I use spirit is what I try to use the most. Um, the great ohm, the one source, all of that to me is the same thing. And what I deal with is energy. So. Uh, metaphysics is physics. It's just meta being extra large, physics being energy. So it's all energy. As a psychic, I can read, somebody can read your energy. As a medium, I'm reading, hearing, seeing, feeling the energy from the other side. Did I answer your question? <clears throat> yeah, I'm just wondering when it comes, I mean, is there a reason it comes? It's just sporadically pops in? Uh, it doesn't sporadically pop in usually. I usually have, I usually uh, ask or say, I, I, I'm ready to work. I'm open, you know flip the switch. I've done, so earlier today I did meditations, I did prayers, I did some reading, etc. So that, and talk with my guides and the angels and the archangels of spirit and, and your loved ones and said, you know, I'll be doing this this evening. Please, well, I didn't know I had to say please would be with me. I, I know it's with me. So I, I set the opening. Okay. There are times when unexpectedly I will get um, the clue, the cue that that I'm supposed to say something or do something, and I have learned to to, <laughs> to do that. Yeah. First couple times, you know, first time in a restaurant, you know, that I got, you know, I saw the waiter's grandmother. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm not gonna say in a public restaurant that your oh your grandmother's there. Um, but Spirit let me know that, that that's what I'm supposed to do. So since then, I've tried to, when I get, um, I don't know what the word would be, the, the message or, or, you know, the energy, then I try to go ahead and deliver. Does that answer? Yes, it does. Thanks. Okay. Wow. <clears throat> Good to see you. This is my... Uh, hey. Hi, how are you? Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. This is Martha, who's presenting tonight. Hi. I've seen Martha. Awesome. Do you give in at Aura of Fabrics, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. I was going to ask, uh, what happens when you just, when things come uh, so spontaneously um, that you can't really control it? You know, I'll tell you, like, my personal experience with it. And uh, I didn't realize until I started studying. Um, I started studying, uh, I don't know if you know, depth psychology. And I'm actually a, you know, a doctoral candidate in it. And, you know, one of the things that Jung talks about is, uh, Carl Jung talks about is, mm -hmm. is active imagination. Mm -hmm. And ever since I started doing that, uh, things have been opening up and it's been as I never realized that there were mediums in my family and oh. I and I have them and mm -hmm. I things are coming at me uh -huh. that I can't control uh -huh. and I don't know how to but in other words like one example I was you know laying in bed and uh, I, I wasn't dreaming I wasn't asleep right. but it was as if there was a woman next to me mm -hmm. Uh, as if she were right there mm -hmm. in next to my head mm -hmm. speaking and she actually said this is my home and then a guy on the other side of me was mumbling and crying and that's pretty disconcerting you know <laughs> when you, you don't have I mean I've had little things like you know vowels and stuff like that where you know I've seen a face come up from the you know mm -hmm. and I don't you know I don't know if that's in, in between liminal space or what it is exactly, but you know, where they said, ah, and you know, oh, and you know, but 
or a repeating like my name like Gary 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 you know that I've read done a little reading about it and they said that that's also common for something that's just beginning mm -hmm. but <laughs> I guess uh, well to control it to be able to shut it off to be able to uh, when I opened up you know in the the third eye, mm -hmm. you know, the chakra, mm -hmm. uh, and started doing a little bit of Reiki and didn't even realize I was doing it. Uh, things, like I said, things started to open up for me. And uh, I guess, uh, what kind of mediumship is that? Is there like categories of mediumship? Is it? I Mediumship, again, we're using a word. So yeah. what you're opening up to is the energy. So you're mm -hmm. raising your energy. You're raising your vibration. It's all energy. So we know this table, if it travels at the speed of light squared, it would mm -hmm. no longer be a table. It's all energy. So by doing your research, and probably genetically and from, I'm sorry, from all those people on the other side, um, your family, uh, your vibration is raising to explore and experience um, that energy, that other dimension. So um, I'm sure you've read Memories, Dreams, and Reflections. Mm -hmm. So, you know, which is amazing, amazing that it's just, just open it up and we'll let it flow. Let mm -hmm. it. So what I would suggest would be a couple things. Yes, you're being called. Mm -hmm. That's all there is to it. You're being called by spirit. Um, the best thing to do is to surround yourself with white light. Mm -hmm. um, and that uh, there's different techniques for when you want to turn it on. So there's fear and there's love. That's all there is. Mm -hmm. There's fear and there's love. So when somebody sits down next to you and you're you're not asleep, I you know you're talking my language. Um, you can greet that with fear, or you can greet it with love. Hmm. Okay. So uh, so the techniques that I use, and and you know as Gloria teaches us, is to have your guides to know your guides. And so one of our guides is our protector guide. And so I use my protector guide a lot, you know, protect me. Um, and surrounding myself with white light. There's different prayers and meditations that, that you can use. And you can just say, you know, okay, spirit, I, I get it. Um, I don't have control. Um, spirit's in control. So how do I explain this? I'm listening. Um, But by working with my guides, then I can control when I'm open, pretty much. I don't know if that makes sense at all. Mm -hmm. Kind of contradictory, and it is. There's a lot of contradiction. But it's not logic. There's logic to it, but it's not, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. I never thought of my, you know, guides like that. Like one of them is an, an uncle, you know, that comes through. Like I have a medium friend in England and she's working with me <laughs> to, you know, also to mm -hmm. help me open up as well, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, get in touch with my spirit guides and mm -hmm. one of them happens to be my uncle. And, uh, but, you know, even beyond that, sometimes I get things that are unexpected, maybe things that aren't attached to me and my family that mm -hmm. come through. Like, I don't know what to call them, whether they're spirits or ghosts or, you know, but I've had ghostly encounters, I guess you want to call it, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> I mean, pretty crazy ones, you know, like, um, and it's a feeling. I don't always see something, but it's like a feeling, you know, like uh, the hair standing up on, your, you know, like that chill or whatever, you know, like I was in the shower. And I felt like somebody was standing back there looking at me, you know, showering. So, you know, I'm just trying to figure out, I guess, uh, how to have more control, but also, and the spirit, uh, the, you know, getting in touch with your, the spirit, spirit and the guides, 
uh, probably might help in that way, you know, for protection. And there's ways, you know, the sage, but you know, the mm. I guess, you know, I'm just <laughs> I don't know. I you know, I'm yeah. just like pulling from the yeah. Yeah. you know, like what other people have yeah. have, you know, experience or Absolutely. You know, I, I didn't and, mean to make that face. It's just um so um So the only reason I made the face about sage is, is that I'm really into um, connecting to spirit. Mm -hmm. So the spirit needs sage. Mm -hmm. This room right now is filled with beautiful white light. There's angels, there's people from the other side. Um, do I need to run around with sage? Because <laughs> The Sioux, only the Sioux. I mean, Native Americans ran around with sage and got rid of negative energy. Uh, you know something? Down in Florida, those nations didn't have sage. So there's these, mm -hmm. you know, there's nations who have their traditions. So, um, and That's one of the reasons I don't use much sage and that sort of thing is simply because some people have asthma. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when I do a gallery, if we sage the room and somebody comes in and goes, <laughs> I don't think I'm doing God's work particularly. So again, it's, it's to me, it's the direct. So going back, um, so we have clairvoyant, mm -hmm. which is clear seeing, clairaudience, which is clear hearing, um, Claire Gustav, which is when we can taste and smell, um, and then there's clairsentient, which is um, just a knowing. And then the fifth one is Claire Cognizance. Pardon? Cognizance. 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 Cognizance is, yeah, that's the knowing. Claire Sentient is the feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So everybody has strengths in, in some areas. So in my group, we practice developing all the clairs, but people have certain players that are stronger than others. I actually have one of my group members who um, I think is, should do, I don't like that word, but is, um, should be using automatic writing because that seems to be her gift, which is frustrating her because she wants to see and hear and I'm like, oh, you know, wouldn't it be nice if I could just go and get all that information? So I don't know if I'm answering your question. Mm, yeah, yeah, definitely. Other questions, arguments, criticisms, it's all open. Martha, are you going to be reading any of us? Or if that's what we want. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's anything else that I wanted to say. Uh, okay. Maybe we can ask Edith to do some reading too. I saw somebody come in when he came. Did you see somebody come in? No. I mean, he sat down and I thought he was going there, but there was a person there, and then he sat here. So I felt like I was having double vision, and then I realized because I was focusing on you and not there, but he came with somebody. So did you see him? You probably you can. Um, I haven't opened completely up, so what I'd like to do is, is talk a little bit about how I do readings, and then do a short meditation, um, which will then, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm certainly sensing quite a number of people in here. Yeah. For a recap, uh, <laughs> I've heard so much about the Akashic Records, Akashic Records, I just, what is it exactly? Or, you know, what is it? Is it the collective unconscious, you know, in like the union terms? Or, you know, the unconscious? Deborah. Deborah does that. Deborah's up. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Akashic Records are this ethereal, energetic, think of it as the database of the sky. All right, so it contains all the information about you since you were created, mm -hmm. which could be, you know, eons. But what we're talking about tonight is the, the mediumship side of it. Okay. So we'll go back 
more to Akashic Records next month. Okay. If that's okay? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's awesome. fine. I just was curious because I've heard so much like that word, and, you know, and I've okay. been like, what the heck are you talking about? You know? Yeah, it's your missing manual. Hmm? It's, it's your user manual. Oh, okay. And that's I think a crazy way. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I think they overlap considerably, mm -hmm. and Deborah Not Philosophy overlaps mm -hmm. considerably. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that one of my beliefs is knowledge, as humans, we want to know, but knowledge isn't the answer. Mm -hmm. We still have to act on the knowledge. So going to the Akashic Records, maybe, maybe you in this lifetime had a terrible relationship with your mother and she's passed and you know you still are carrying that bitterness etc and you go to the Akashic Records and you can find out her past your past and why that was but you still have to do something about it now you know so you may be and many people are spiritual enough and strong enough to forgive her and forgive yourself and, and let it go and let it be in the past and move on and, and you're free from that Sometimes in mediumship, your mother might come through and you don't want her to. The last time on this earth, you want her as your mother. But she's coming to ask forgiveness. And so being able to communicate with your mother when you've had this bad relationship, you know why the bad relationship was there, but she's going through her growth and needs forgiveness. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what I find is when we pass, uh, we do our own life review. God doesn't judge us. We're in a material body. This body runs on electromagnetic energy. Every cell, every atom is running on electromagnetic energy. When the body goes, that electromagnetic energy goes to the light dimension, the next dimensions. We then judge ourselves. <coughs> Who is harder on you? Who's the hardest person? Yourself. Yeah. We're, so you can imagine. I mean, wouldn't it be nice to be able to go to the other side and God goes, you know, you went to mass every Sunday. You're forgiven. Not to pick on Catholics, um, but just as an example. Uh, so we judge ourselves, and what I've learned, and this is only from my experiences, is that it's almost like AA. So we have to go back and make amends, and you know, it's reviewing your life. I don't remember, I don't know all the twelve steps, but I remember them. But um, you know, taking inventory of your life and who you, you know, that we're we're helpless over our life. We have don't have control, and we have to make amends to people. So oftentimes when I'm doing a mediumship reading and somebody will come through and they'll say, I, I don't want to hear from that person. You know, I don't want to hear from Uncle Joe who abused me when I was six years old. The reason Uncle Joe is here is because he needs to apologize. You don't have to forgive him, but he has to apologize. So there's, um, I don't know where I'm going with that. <laughs> but uh, we continue to grow and work on the other side. We don't go up and sit on clouds. I know it's not, it may not be connected to mediumship, but it, uh, do you believe in like past lives? Is that yes. something like a part of the Akashic Records? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Huge okay. part, because it's the record of you since you were created. A lot of past lives in there. Uh, only because um, I just, out of like oh, off the whim, you know, it's with uh, a group, you know, so we've been with a bunch of groups and anyway, I just felt like, hey, we were talking about past lives, we just did this meetup group, you know, about past lives. And I'm like, oh yeah, let me just, uh, you know, do this for this girl. And I started seeing this, uh, I got into the zone, you know, and I started seeing these lives, these, like a, a movie screen, you know, mm -hmm. like, but it was like a waterfall and like a cellophane wall and each one, you know, it was like layers of it. And I kept seeing different stuff thing going on, you know, different people, you know, past, you know, that were connected to her, I guess. 
So I was just like, okay. <laughs> I was like, this is cool, you know, when I tapped into that. And, you know, so yeah, that could be part of the Akashic uh, Records. So, all right. All right. So. There's a book by Brian Weiss, Many Lives, Many Masters. I think you might find it interesting. Many Lives, Many Masters. He's written a few books, but he explores past lives in that book. He does a regression. And he tells you what you were in the past life. What was his name? He's Dr. Brian Weiss. He's actually a medical doctor. Wow. And he never used to believe in it. And he went, he was converted because of some experience he had. And he doesn't practice medicine now. This is what he does. He does regressions on people to heal them. Wow. So, you know, like Marco was saying, having to live through something. Um, it's a way for them to forgive themselves while they're still on this earth. Mm. They go back, he regresses them, you know, and then he also, um, it's also a way to get over your fears. If you're afraid of water or something, it's because mm. of your past life. Mm. And I've noticed that a lot. Like I know at once when someone says to me, because I, I deal with a lot of public as well, and when someone says to me they were afraid of something, I know at once what happened. You know, things like afraid of planes, afraid of going near water, afraid of fire. And with your, you know, inside going back, you can easily see the path. And so it's all linked up with mediumship. You can ask your guide, or you can do the Akashic Records, you can do either way and find out all this information about somebody. And that's what he talks about in the book. Cool. Another so interesting what Gary's experiencing, do you meet a lot of people who get this much download all at once? Because this is really abrupt, what he's describing. More and more, yes, mm -hmm. because the planet needs it. But has anybody noticed that the Earth needs light workers? The human beings, the human race needs light workers. So it's happening. Okay, stop it. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Um, we're seeing it in younger and younger people. Yeah, and um, we used to talk about indigo children, mm -hmm. how special they were. Well, now it's just, yeah. So, no, it's not unusual. Um, he, by going into a probably, you probably had experiences as a child, you may not remember them, and, and um, other, pe other people, and that's why I, used, I love the way you started it about imagination, because that's one of the exercises we've been doing in my group, because people who grow up lose their imagination. Mm -hmm. and, and in the group, we've done two exercises now based on imagination, and there's some people who can't do it. Mm -hmm. They can't just let their imagination go. Um, so you've been opening the doors, and, and you know there's probably some genetic. But yeah, I, I do see it happening more and more that people are suddenly, suddenly getting called and going, Ugh, you know what is this? When I was a kid, I used to speak in tongues and like, <laughs> you know, but it's it's not just tongues. I would talk in other languages that I didn't realize. You know that nobody, I guess my parents didn't recognize it, and I wish I had a <laughs> a tape recording of it to see what it was because I think that that's also part of that download at least I feel like it might be you know so I don't know let me but, mention one other book and then we'll get to doing some readings okay. um, another book that's that's dated but it's called the education of oversoul number seven and one of the advantages of that book for me was, was the first time I realized that time is not linear. Mm -hmm. And that I really realized that time is not linear. So, and the concept of education of uh, Oversoul Number 7, and I've been reading in, in several places recently about this, that there's an Oversoul having, and, and that soul is learning through various incarnations. So in terms of reincarnation, that soul can, can because there's not time, space, etc. on the other side, that soul is having multiple experiences 
in our entire time. So this soul is has a human form in the Ice Age, which is still going on because there's no past or future on the other side. That's on Earth. Um, and it's got a soul in Jerusalem, and it's got a soul going, I mean, it's, it, it's, it takes the brain pretty hard to wrap it around. Um, but there's other, we tend to be linear, and we like to think we can understand. If I understand it, if I know it, but anybody who's done research, you get, you take a hypothesis, you do your research, and maybe you come up with a solution, but you know what? It raises another question. You're never gonna get to the answer. We don't know what causes heart attacks. Coming from a medical, we don't know what causes heart attacks. Okay, being male, obese, older, smoking, high cholesterol. So why did that 30-year-old man who was in perfect shape just drop dead of a heart attack? Mm -hmm. We don't have the answers. We can build and build and build. But there comes a time where we have to do Kierkegaard's leap of faith and accept things. And that's very hard for humans. So, blah, 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 blah. sorry. <laughs> in terms of doing readings, um, just again reiterating, energy is never lost. And that's not that's not mediumship, that's just plain physics. Energy cannot be lost. It can be transformed, but it cannot be lost. So we're dealing on an energy level and a vibrationary level. Spirit speaks in symbols. I don't necessarily, I will get words, I will get colors, I will get shapes, I will get symbols. Uh, I can't talk to spirit like this until I'm dead. So I'm using lots of glorious things. Mm -hmm. um, so what I do is raise my vibration, those on the other side lower their vibration so that we can communicate. But it's done, it's not clear, okay? So it's for you to interpret. If I'm giving, bringing through information for you, it's up to you to interpret. It's not up to me to interpret. If you can't figure it out, I might be able to help you and tell you what it symbolizes to me, but it, it is going to mean something to you. I try to bring through a name or letter. I'm not real good at that. I'm getting better. I'm working real hard. My guides are trying to help me with that. One of the things about if I bring through a name or a letter, it is not necessarily the name or the letter of the person in spirit. It could be somebody else in spirit. It could be somebody on the earth plane that the person in spirit is concerned about. It, so one of the things that happens is throwing the baby out with the bathwater. <clears throat> so I describe your Uncle Joe to a T, but I get the name Thomas. Oh, that's not my Uncle Joe. It looked like him. It, dressed like him, I talked like him, yes, he, I remember that memory that he shared, yes, I have that um, toy that he gave me, but that's not my Uncle Joe because you said the name Thomas. Okay, so don't throw the baby out of the backwater. All mistakes are mine, not spirits. All mistakes are mine, trying to interpret spirit. So I take full responsibility for any mistakes. Uh, there's also a thing called piggybacking. And this will probably happen tonight because of the connections in this room. And that just means that I may be, uh, Uncle Joe may be coming through, but he may have similar things to somebody else's uncle or somebody else's father. So, and sometimes spirits will come through together. Even though they may not have known each other on the life, on the earth plane, they uh, have connected on the other side. So sometimes when we, when we open the portal, um, spirits may want to come in. And so what I'll be doing for the prayer is only spirits connected with us come through. Because being in a public space like this, um, we, want, we want just our people coming through. So just kind of going back to that piggybacking, and I, I never know, but one time when I was doing um, A gallery. 
uh, every person who came through was a godfather, not a mafia godfather. But every person who came through, the person said, that's my godfather. And they may not have been related, they may have been their mother's friend or something, but everybody <coughs> came through. And I just, I just had this idea that the portal opened and all the godfathers up there said, oh, let, come on, let's go. So um, there may be some piggybacking. So if I'm telling you somebody's coming through, but it's coming, you, it makes sense to hear, then we just, you know, um, and I'll explain more how we do that. The other thing to understand is that there's such a thing as psychic amnesia, and that's very common. Uh, and it's happened quite a bit. It's happened to me in the sense that um, we were doing exercises and somebody was reading for me and they got Raggedy Ann and Andy. And we tried upside down and the other. Did I know Ann and Andy? Did I know somebody who was Raggedy? Did I, you know, could not for the life of us figure out what that symbolized, so we let it go. Well, I drove home from class that night, went into my bedroom, moved my raggedy Ann and Andy, <laughs> and got in bed. <laughs> and I've had people, I've, I've had people like, you know, there's a, there's a dog around here, I see a dog around here, I see a little white dog. And she's like, oh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then about 10 minutes later, oh yeah, I have a white dog. <laughs> So um, that's, that's normal. That's why there's pencil and pen here, if you have papers, so that if you want to write something down. The other thing sometimes with writing down is that you, uh, loved ones can come through that you may not know. And so sometimes you want to take notes home and ask somebody in the family. One of the things that, that happens in a gallery is people say, well, I never met my grandmother. But she met you. I mean, number one, she might have met you when you were you know, like my grandmother died when I was two. Well, you still meant a lot to your grandmother. You may, and you may not need it. it it's just. Um, That's a good point because I never met my uncle, but he met me when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, and obviously he didn't know me beyond seven or eight or right. whatever. Yes. And I've had times when great great grandparents came through, mm -hmm. and way before. Uh, but there's a reason that they're coming through. Okay, so um, what I try to do is uh, the way I was trained is to give you male or female, and um, give you some information, personality, what they look like cause of passing, as much information I can give you until you may recognize this person. So if I'm describing somebody and it makes sense to you, just say yes, I can take that or raise your hand, maybe two people. Um, our loved ones are, our, our loved ones, wow. Do we have Kleenex? <laughs> I do, actually. I'm not going to cry. I, I can pull it back. But our loved ones want to hear. Thank you. I might keep it up there. There might be. Your loved ones want to hear from you. The reason loved ones come through is they want us to know that they're always with us, that they're not dead. They don't like it when sometimes I'll say I talk to dead people. Um, they're not, they, they really emphasize we're not dead. They're, we're, we're alive, we're more alive than we are, stuck in this body. Uh, and so when you start taking the information, then they can connect better with me and with you, if that makes sense. So it's like a three-way conversation, or a four-way uh, spirit, person in spirit, you and I. Okay, I think that's all I can think of. And Mia, please feel free to speak up. Okay. Um, so, just a brief meditation. I'm gonna ask you to take a few deep breaths in and out. In through the nose and out 
through the mouth. When you breathe in, breathe so deep that you push your belly out. Don't lift your lungs, lift your shoulders. Push your belly out so that the lungs can fill all the way down to the bottom. And when you breathe out, push your belly towards your back. So lifting that diaphragm and getting all the air out. So with this next breath in, when you breathe out, you're going to breathe out any tension in your body. Just see it leave. Let it go. With another deep breath in and out, I want you to let go of all emotional energy that you're containing right now. Any fear, any tension, any expectations, let it all go. Let it go. With your next deep breath in, feel, see, hear, know that you are breathing in beautiful, sparkling oxygen. The gift of life. Breathe it in and know, see, feel how it spreads throughout your body, through your bloodstream, this sparkling, blessed energy. And when you breathe out, just gently breathe out. We are surrounded by the pure white light of spirit. Only good comes to us. Only good comes through us, and only good comes from us. We know that the angels, the archangels, our guides, are all with us. And we ask that our loved ones who want to step forward and communicate Join us, and only those who are here in this room, connected. We know that there is no negativity on the other side. All negativity is on this side. All evil is on this side. And we know that we are protected by the pure white light of the one source. We are one with each other, and we are one with the source. So let it be. So I'm not sure if this woman belongs to there's a woman present. Um, brown hair, kind of a light brown blonde hair. Shoulder length. shaped face. I believe she has blue eyes with, with light eyes, and I think they're blue. And they're kind of intense, and she has a heart-shaped face. Um, she's telling me that she is appearing younger. She's 
She's appearing at a younger age than when she passed. She's making me do this and I'm asking why. Either she did this to somebody, like, like as a child, you know, you do that to a child or somebody you loved, or some, somebody did that to her when she was passing, or there's something about this that may become clear. As far as a name get, I hear either a soft C or a soft S or a CH, soft CH or um, sh, sh. I, I'm getting a Susan. You're getting? Susan. Okay, an S, Susan, thank you. <clears throat> I get the sense that she's either a mother or a sister energy. Okay. There's a lot of sadness around her. A lot of sadness. She's really looking at me intensely um, forward and there's, there's sadness. Uh, when I ask her what she's doing is, is when I ask her what her hobbies or her occupation or what she did, she's showing me scissors. And they're not just plain scissors, they're kind of elaborate. There's, there's decoration on the handle. And she's cutting. And she's cutting, remember when you cut the paper dolls? You fold up the paper and, and that she's showing me that. Can anybody take any of this? Does this make sense? Does any little piece of this make sense to anybody? It could. Okay. Tell me what you could take or possibly could take. So that can you take? Oh, you're asking. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm still in there. Like, um, my my thought was my own sister. She had blue eyes. She had light hair. And I I know for a fact she's fluttering as an angel because she's always running out there doing things. So she's all over the place. That's just my feeling. Okay. Um, I'm getting chills of confirmation. I think that's true because when I ask her for a memory, what she shows me is one of, one of the strongest things she shows me, which I didn't quite understand, is maroon. The color of maroon. Like your glasses and your shirt. So not a bright red, but she's showing me sitting on a living room floor with a patterned rug and a patterned sofa playing, but the, the sense is maroon, kind of a um, warm, kind of dark living room playing in. Does that make sense to you at all? That's the color of my rug at home. 
a dark red. So that may be her way of saying she's there and with you. Uh, she just smiled, so I, I think. Okay, let me see. Okay, she's, she's making reference to um, a magnifying glass. Mm. Does that make sense? That would include my mother. She's alive, but she terribly needs magnifying glasses to do her crafts. <laughs> okay, so that's your sister making a reference to your mother because she shows me this yeah, magnifying I glass. That, yeah. Okay, because she also shows me like a monocle, um, but the same idea of magnifying. She does not want to talk about her passing. When I asked her about her passing, she's like, "No, nope, she wouldn't." Yeah, not not there. Um, did you do this to her when she was ill? She's this this gesture. That would be something my grandmother would be doing, not me. I think more okay. if that were if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, there's something. A very strong or my own mother to her possibly that could be yeah because yeah, that's a very strong movement yeah. okay let me see what her message is well number one she's she's kissing you on your left cheek she's she's um you know you you know she's around oh yeah yeah because she's like uh, that you get her messages she's kind of laughing at me she's like okay yeah um Okay, so um, she's asking, what are you doing to take care of yourself? Mm. Good question. <laughs> she probably would be asking that, but yeah. So I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a negative, I don't think it's a warning, but she's standing behind you, putting both hands on your shoulders and saying, um, mm. kind of massaging the tension in your shoulders and saying, you know, what are you doing to take care of yourself? You don't have to answer me. <laughs> I don't no, I, don't, I get it. Yeah. Good, thank you. Okay. Um, I'm trying to wrap up with her, but she, she's, I don't think she's singing, maybe humming, or something, um, there's some, there's a tune, music or something along those lines. It almost sounds kind of tinny, like a, um, I don't know what it is, but she's, she thinks it's funny. Um, so I don't know if there was some song or, or something, or a uh, wind-up toy that made a song or something. Music box. Pardon? Music box. Like a music, thank you. Music box type thing. It's kind of that sound. Um, yeah. She's also making some reference to. Oh, I, okay. She's making reference to soap and washing your hands. So <laughs> I'm going to leave you with that. I have no idea. It may be part of taking care of yourself. You know, the. Um, I, I don't know, and I, or if it's a joke, I have no idea. Um, something about bubbles. It's very lighthearted. But anyway, she loves you very much, and she's with you, and you hear her. She, she, so, um, take care of yourself. So thank you. Thank you. What is her name? Ulrike. <laughs> hmm. I'm Susan. Oh, okay. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> so, 
actually, I have se several different versions of my name. So. I guess, because I know you're yeah, Susie. Well, that's, see, that's my sister's side, I mean, meaning my side of the family. My husband's side is Susan. My friends call me Sue. People who don't know me and see my name call me Suzanne. So right. I answer right. by all of them because it's not worth it going. The real true name is Susanne. Susanna. 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 And, and that's so hard to pronounce. So that's, you know, so I go, I, I, everybody has a different, I have to watch which card I sign to who because it's different for each family. So, but it's all good. It's the same, you know. Did you give anything else up for her sister? I just saw um, the same person behind the closed door and she was banging. So I don't know if it's the same, if she had anything. She was behind the closed door, like she was locked up. My sister had it really rough towards the end with her relationship. But then she got ill and so her partner took good care of her but didn't do right by her later. After everything was said and done, he kept no promises. <clears throat> so but there was a, a, a lot of grief there with, uh, a, and I was left as an executrix, and it was a horrific year and a half because the will disappeared and then reappeared. <laughs> so she knows what all the trouble I have to go through, and then I couldn't complete it because there was no signed will. They have to have an original will. So there was a lot, a mess. It's a mess. And things are happening again now. We think that the house was abandoned and all these crazy things. So it's a lot of stuff around, centers around her uh, life. And her daughter, who's very close to me, is totally still with her. She won't let go of her like in any shape or form. So I, I don't know if that made sense to anybody else, but that's all I, I thought of her. Uh, Mm -hmm. you know. Seemed like she was wanting to get out of that closed space. It felt like she was in prison. Well, she, I think she was, had she not gotten sick, she was preparing for divorce. So. Okay. So that kind of makes sense. But yes. she seemed in an uncomfortable situation. Very. Where she wanted to get out. Yes. Very she, that, was, that was where she was heading until she got sick mm -hmm. because she needed a man. You know, I, I saw the frustration yeah. of trying to get out of a very difficult situation. So, correct. She wanted, it made sense also what she said about what am I doing for myself because I'm taking, I'm sole caregiver for my mother plus my grandkids. So it's a lot of work because that's why I can only do just so many dates. Right. We couldn't make other classes, um, you know, but we're working and, and my mom and the kids and it's a lot of times too much. So the question resonates because she's saying, you know, take you, you got to start thinking of yourself because I really, I'm not giving myself the creative part that Deborah and I spoke about that I'm lacking to be who I should be or, or need to be or find again, or whatever that, you know, was. I used to be a funny, humorous, creative person. <laughs> now I'm like cranky and not the same. So it's my own fault, I guess, because I don't know how to say no, but. Well, there's a anyway. gentleman stepping forward. Um, fairly tall, he seems pretty tall silver iron colored hair he has a good head of hair and he's proud of it um kind of a craggy 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 face strong face strong eyebrows uh strong personality strong energy is he lanky He's not fat. <laughs> um, let me see what he's wearing. He 
He's telling me he has kind of a complex personality. Um, that he's, he's, uh, he's telling me he's not easy to read personality-wise because there were different parts of him. He could come across and he can come across as very stern and kind of um, intimidating, but he also has a humorous side. He definitely has a sense of humor. Uh, and he has a softer side. So he, he kind of, as I look at him, he's, he, his face kind of changes. But if you would meet him on the street or if you saw him somewhere, you, you might be kind of intimidated by him. Uh, he's proud of his voice. He's telling me he's proud of his voice. So I don't know if he sang or if he just has a, uh, you know, who's that James Ray Earl Jones, James Earl Jones that has that voice. He's, he's got, or Sam Elliott, he's got a voice. He's wearing a white business shirt um, open at the collar, and you can see a, a t-shirt underneath. And he's wearing either jeans or khaki, um, khaki type jeans. It's, uh, so it's not a dress shirt with a suit or anything like that. There's a slight sense of arrogance about him, which makes him laugh when I say that. I get a J associated with him. That's all we talk. Mm. Pardon? I think it's I think it's it's uh, Michael Jack. Okay. The same one that came to you. Probably. The same one who I was thinking about on the way here. That's that right. I had a feeling I was gonna run into him tonight. That's the one I saw. Yes, and that's where he is. Mm -hmm. Right now. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um yeah, I'm getting confirmation. He tells me he passed suddenly, um, and he, he makes me do this, something with the heart. But he also tells me that um, there was something leading up to that, if that makes sense. That it was, um, I don't know if he had intest, you know, intestinal or abdominal problems in his lifetime. Um, he, whew, okay. Um, he's like, I'm telling tales out of school. So he, he didn't like telling people if he had any health problems or, or discomfort. But there's something here and then it goes up and there's something here with the heart and the lungs. Um, I'm getting that he was a very skeptical person. Oh, you guys are nailing him so far. Very skeptical, very mm -hmm. hard to convince, sort of stubborn type of, I like to do my own thing. Yeah. Um, I'm also getting that, did he have anything to do with wood lumber? No. What's with the lumber? Because I see a lot of <laughs> wood. I see him in the woods. In the woods? But it, he also tells me that um, when he passed, he wasn't surprised on the other side. So he may have been skeptical, but and he may not have been church going. Uh, but I think that's to, okay. The woods is more symbolizing he, his belief or his faith or his, his. I don't even like those words. He doesn't like them either. Um, oh, he let you know. Yeah, he he connected to nature. Yeah. He connected to the outdoors. Um, and so when he passed, uh, 
even though he's skeptical, well, it wasn't my, you know, who. He was also intelligent. He was very he's brilliant. Yeah, because that's what he's showing me when he passed. Is like, oh, hmm, cool, wow. Um, did he have a wife? He had a partner. A partner. Yeah. Female or male? But I see another female though. It was like a friend or somebody next to him. Uh, his sister. Could it be his sister? It's probably my mom. Oh, uh, okay. I definitely see someone next to him. Well, I mean, my mom's still alive, so you're seeing something next to him now? Yeah, so oh, I not your mom. She's no, I have no idea. Maybe my grandma, I don't know. It's not definitely mm -hmm. not your mom. Well, I would hope not. She's, she's alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, you know, I'm getting a call for you soon. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said that. Yeah, I, I can see somebody next to him, but they're not coming through to me. He's coming through stronger. So let me see. Um, when you say something like, I've been through a lot of shit. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, I mean, probably problem. listening to you talk about his health problems. <laughs> and you have something of his. Um, Do you want a bath? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's just, I think it's a knife of some sort or something, because he's making me do this. Um, so it's something linear. Um, but he laughs about it. He's like, um, I don't, I don't know what it is, but I hear the word. I hear I'm doing this, and I hear the word line, a line. Um, so I don't know the fishing line or something, something linear of his. Um, Well, I have this is a bracelet. Okay, he's not showing me that. Yeah. Look at that. If I think of something, am I allowed to say something? Mm -hmm. I just thought of a comb. I don't know why. Hair comb. I don't know. Does that make any sense? I don't have a comb. <laughs> I have a bracelet. I don't know what I have to do. I don't know why a comb would just comb and right. I, I, or rulers and combs. I don't know. Well, it may come to you. You may look around and see something, because um, he's laughing about it, and, he, and it's deliberately a riddle, kind of, and he's, he's telling me he'll figure it out. Um, so let me see. His... Okay, so his message, um, he's, he's telling me that, uh, No, he's impatient with you. It's like he's doing this behind you. Um, quit hesitating, quit thinking, quit. Um, he's, he's making me do this with my hand. Um, oftentimes when spirit does this with my hand, it's um, something to complete, something to finish, a cycle. Um, so I don't know if that makes sense to you, that he's doing this. Don't know. Get that house finished and get your butt moving. <laughs> Could be that. <laughs> Could be one of many things. <laughs> Are you a slacker? No. Far from it. Who's the slacker? Because I got that word too. I got the word slacker. I mm. know. You just got the word. If it's not you, then it's somebody else. Then you have to. Probably connected with that. 
Somebody about a slacker? No, I don't want to talk about anybody outside of school. <laughs> <clears throat> some, of, some of this makes sense. Okay. It makes sense. Especially with you tying in the house. I live with a bunch of slackers. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Excuse I've been me. working on my house for two years to get rid of them, but no help. So maybe it's that, I don't know. He's excited. You know, he, that's why he's kind of doing this. He's, he's excited about like, getting it done, the new cycle. New, and that's what he's saying, it's this new cycle. Finish up and let's go. Because he, he goes with you. Obviously, he came here tonight, so he's, he's close to you. And, um, yeah. Do you nice. resemble him? I mean, we all, you know, we're Irish, we all look the same. Yeah. <laughs> and you look like you're a twin. Well, I wouldn't say that. He, he looked more like my brother. But there's definitely a strong family resemblance, yeah. same hair. Yeah. He's, he was more proud of his than mine, though. Yes, I saw that. The hair and he wore a different height. He wore a tighter. Yeah. Yeah. He's not as tall as me, but he's, he's thicker than me. But yeah, what you were saying about the harm and stuff, he just, he went for a walk and boom, went down and he just never really recovers. Something, then things happen with his intestines and, and then cancer. So we, we had gone to see him and he passed away while my brother and I were on the plane going out to see him. So maybe this is all what you were seeing, I don't know. He didn't want you to see him. That was him. Mm -hmm. no, yeah. he, didn't want, he didn't want us there, but no. Uncle Chuck wanted us there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, I, and Uncle Chuck was probably saying, Jack is going to kill me for this. <laughs> yeah, he, he had a lot of pride. Um, you, you call it stubbornness, but he was like, yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't want you there. I didn't want you to see me like that. And, and it, um, Yes, so he's telling me he, 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 he was ready to go, and he was glad to go, and um, I don't know why he's making me do this. Me. He's just saying, you know, it, it was okay. It, it, it was... It was complete, and and he. It wasn't like he was happy to move on, but it was okay. It, it was more than okay. It was okay. You know, what's next? What's next? What's next? Um, which is interesting, really interesting, because he's he's actually kind of communicating to me that there was an intellectual what's next. It's like it not, he didn't think, oh, I'm going to die and there'll be nothing even though he may not have had a spiritual idea, but he was like, okay, what's next? Hmm, what's next? That's what he's kind of saying to me. Yeah, I can see that. This is his personality. Well, he's with you and he's telling me he's gonna hang out with you for until you, you know, he, until you get this. You know, he's, he's, He's pushing you. He's going to be pushing you. So you may be getting some help from him in some way. You can ask him. I could use it. Yeah, you can ask. Can you push your broom? I mean, how does this work? <laughs> <laughs> Call the laundry, maybe? I mean, something? Um, I, I would ask him, um, ask your guides, and then just see who turns up in the next week or two of what happens. No guarantees. Yeah, right. can, can you ask him questions? You Ooh. can. Who's stealing all the stuff in my house? Like, things are constantly disappearing in my house. And it's, it's been forever. I could put this pen right here, come back 20 minutes later, it's gone. I could ask anybody in my house, did you take that pen? And it's gone. Two months, three months, two months later, boom, back. This has been happening to me forever, but it's gotten worse lately. So maybe you get Uncle Jack, any answers? Is it you? <laughs> yes. Um, so, okay, okay. What are you resisting? What are you resisting spiritually? That, that's what he's asking. 
Um, but that's why these things are happening. Um, how else can I get your attention? So it is him. Well, he's only been gone two years, who so was doing it all these other years? But I, I, I think it's it, I think it's more than just him. Right. I, I think I and and it's just something you'll have to kind of figure out. But the spirit's trying to get your attention. Okay, and, and so whether it's energy in the house that's doing that, that needs attention, that could be, or it could be the energy around you that's trying to get your attention. But that's an attention-getting technique of the spiritual world. Okay, thank you. Same as electricity going on and off and the TV suddenly going on, that's a kind of different thing, but one of the things they will do is, is move things. No, I've had the TV too a couple times. Okay. You're getting called. So just think about, do you get, are you getting anything else? No. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they're kind of all around. There's a whole group around you. So I don't, I don't know. So one thing I would think about would be the house, the energy in the house. Uh, you know, if there's spirit, a spirit in the house, right? Not haunted. Um, no, I feel like I'm haunted because it's it's been in three houses. It follows me wherever I go. Okay, so if the number three with spirit means you cannot ignore it. So, again, my advice is there's something calling you, or there's something that you're resistant. And spiritually, spiritually, that sounds about right. Right, Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can. Wait, did you guys talk before I came in? <laughs> no, I didn't. No, I'm crazy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, thank you, Uncle Jack. Okay. Uh, and thank you. Anita, for helping me. Okay, and see you next time. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to ask you to give me a name of somebody that you would like to hear from on the other side. That doesn't mean that's the who's going to come through. <clears throat> Sandra. Sandra. <clears throat> Look, a, a female immediately appears on your left side. Doesn't necessarily mean it's Sandra, but but as soon as you said the name, that a female appeared on, on your left side. Um, So, there seem to be two or three females appearing together on your left side. Um, I'm getting the word food. Hmm. Something about food and celebration and cooking, like a feast. Mm -hmm. And some kind of uh, merriment around the food, like certain festivals or certain things you made on certain days. Oh, this is person, person was very particular about doing that. It was a ritual. Mm -hmm. And I say female, one, one of the females has her has gray hair and kind of pulled back. Um, her hair, her face is younger than the gray hair. So she doesn't look old and wrinkled. It's, it's kind of soft and there's two females with her uh, and jump in any time. I want to see a playground. Like a home near a playground, or mm -hmm. like a family area that they used to collect, or something that's significant, the playground, play area. It's like a circle. Mm -hmm. I almost feel like I'm there. <laughs> 
there's a lot of joy. Okay. There's a lot of laughter, a lot of merriment. It's like a, you know the maple dance? Yes. Uh, that's what I'm seeing in some way. Very colorful, very happy, very, very joyous, like, you know, very simple, but very, very earthy, earthy kind of joy. I see three generations. I see the woman with gray hair and someone younger and then someone younger, all female. Um, and they're connected somehow. And this would be the, your mother's side of the family. As somebody who's very sick in that group, but they still went on, they didn't show themselves to be really sick. Hmm. So three, gen three generations, huh? That would be my mom, my grandmother, and I don't even want to know who the other generation is. That would go really far back. I wouldn't even know who they are. I'm getting the chills, so that's what happens when I <laughs> do that stuff. I get very, very cold. <laughs> I'm surprised you came. I didn't think she would want to. She's not there. Even though, at this point, it doesn't matter to her, but uh, I think I have to get the feeling she gave up. She's been trying to communicate. No, she's, she's very happy on the other side. She's very happy, so I think it is your grandmother and mother. I'm trying to figure out who this third person is, third female, but she hasn't uh, given up on you. Her, well, it probably could be one of her, could be my grandmother's sister. That makes sense. Okay. But they're they're close, so they, they were close. and were they close um, on the earth plane? Yeah. Yeah. because um, they're very close on the other side. And they're with you. They're uh, when you said they you thought she, they were giving up on you or she was unhappy with you, they rolled their eyes all together. They all went, oh. um She shows me a cookie cutter. They were making cooking. That's their life. That's mm -hmm. how they uh, express love. Cooking. Well, this is it's kind of like a star or crinkle type cookie cutter. What they're telling you is that everything was handmade. Yeah. Okay. Everything was homemade, handmade. They did everything at home. From scratch. Ice cream mm -hmm. from scratch, bread from scratch, everything from scratch, even though it was available at the supermarket. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. They're just, they're going, they're nudging each other and laughing. They're like, see, he remembers. And, and, and yeah, it was that way we did that. Uh, so let me see what their message is. And Gia, if you get an, a message, sir. Um, they love you very much. They're, they <laughs> We're talking mm -hmm. about health. Mm. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Health, you know, kind of to be careful about health because I think somebody had bad health in that thing mm -hmm. and went early, so they want to give you the advice and the warning, not you, but you know, a message for somebody around you if it's not you. No, oh, I think it's me. Okay, I, I don't like to scare people. This no, it's okay. It's you. It makes sense. It makes but sense. That, that's the message. Head. And what I see them doing is pulling you to the right side. So either um, what it says to me is they're pulling you more to more to the intuition. Don't don't shut that off. Um, they're pulling you. They're pulling you towards the the female. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to go yin yang or towards the yin. Um, so that may be um, a balance, like an Ayurvedic balance of yin and yang, that, that you may be out of balance, um, but they're pulling you to the right side, uh, if that makes sense. It does. Because they're not telling me there's bad things on your father's side. They're not, it's not like anti-that, it's just no. like shift, they're wanting you to shift over there. What I'm getting is, when you're making a decision, Go with the softer, yes, compassionate yes. approach. 
yes. decision, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So that makes sense. That's what your grandmother would do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Those leave, like this trio. <laughs> Three of them, huh? Yeah, they're very proud of you. Oh, very proud why? of Why? <laughs> Who's the harshest critic? Do you have a dog? Mm -hmm. No. Oh, I mean. Who's the harshest critic of you? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, we are spiritual beings on the earth plane having a human experience. You are perfect. You are a spiritual being, and that's what they're connecting to, and that's what they're seeing. They know you're going through the human experience, but they know what, how perfect you are, and they're calling that. And that's what you'll connect to. Okay. When we criticize ourselves, it is our ego, and it blocks spirit. And that's what ego wants to do. Not that ego is negative or bad, ego is part of us. But ego is going to do anything it can to make you feel badly about yourself. It is now 8.30 and the library will close in one half hour. If you're using a laptop, I'm hearing voices. It's <laughs> 15 minutes prior to closing. It's a group experience. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll leave you with that. Uh, thank okay. you. And thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Gary. <laughs> Would you like to hear from somebody on the other side? Sure. You know, just, I guess, at random, whatever it comes up. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> there's, well, there's two different things. When we were doing our meditation afterward, when we started the mediumship, there are two mm -hmm. things that keep coming back to me over and over again. And I guess they want to make, there's a message. And, in, you know, one is my dog that basically saw me through a lot, you know, a lot of things. And the other was uh, a girl, and she doesn't want, I can't remember her name, she doesn't want me to remember. But, you know, it was when I was a teenager, and I had a crush on her. And, yeah, and it was one of my first jobs, and yeah, she was actually, uh, I was, I worked with her mother, and that's what well, what I'm seeing uh, is a male on um, your father's side on the family. Figures. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, pretty coming through pretty strongly. Uh, and from where he's placed, I would say it's a father or grandfather. And uh, ooh, okay, father. Is your father on the other side? Uh, not my father. Uh, his brother and their father and my mom's father, but I don't think it's that. It's not your mother's father. No. Um, whoever this is could be very harsh and critical. Um, I'm getting the word garden. I don't know if they like flowers or gardening or mm -hmm. something to do with the garden. If they did, they were professional landscapers or mm -hmm. they belonged to families and had something to do with the garden. Or is the name garden or gardener? Something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't think either one of them are. Mm -hmm. They dress in dark clothes. Um, and I believe he has a hat on pretty low, and I can't really see what kind of hat it is. Uh, oh, that's probably why I got a garden, you know, Earl's family gardener. That's the description. Okay. It's, so the yeah. gardener is the description. Earl, do you guys know who Earl's family yeah. is? Yeah. No. Who is that? Well, Martha described the look, so that's that's where I was going. That was the reference for me. Mm -hmm. 
sounds a lot like my dad's brother, actually, because he was in the military and they had like the hats oh, that okay. were sat like about there. But you know, the hats that look like a, a I don't know, the only thing I can think of is like a, a boat or whatever, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like yeah, the yeah. hat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They don't, they don't wear anything like that anymore, like the, on the uniform. Well, that yeah, makes sense. It's a very older author, and he wrote about a character with a hat like that, so that's why. Well, he's in the Korean War, so. So he may be appearing in uniform because it's dark. Yeah. Dark clothes. Makes sense. Because oh. it's a dark, I mean, Dad's uniform was dark. He was in the military, but his brother was actually in combat, I think, but in the Korean War. It makes sense why he would come through, because, yeah, Dad and him had it falling out, and they didn't talk for forty years, and he died, you know, without. And I was just, I was more broken up about it than anybody in my family. <laughs> I'm like, well, you know, they could have come, you know, they could have. The, the door swings both ways, you know. I'm like, why? I said, why leave open? But strangely enough, I was the first one to get the notification of his death, you know, from his daughter, which is strange, because why didn't anybody else in my family, I mean, my dad should have, or my mom should have gotten a phone call and said, hey, you know, his brother, but no, it was me, why me? You know, so it makes sense why he would come to me. Well, also because you're open to him, um, mm-hmm. and you were open to him, and again, why doesn't matter. Um, mm-hmm. It doesn't. It has nothing to do with the price of tea in China. Um, you, you. He, his spirit feels welcome with you, mm-hmm. um, and. He knows that he can communicate with you, and he knows he can bring through others to you. And and he's um, he's telling me that that he's almost um, he's willing to be a gatekeeper guide for you. Oh mm-hmm. my goodness, thank you. Um, so when you were talking about control, one of our guides we make into or we ask to be a gatekeeper. So. You tell your gatekeeper, your gatekeeper is the guy who lets other spirits come through. But they're the ones who decide who can come through. And that's what he's telling me. And he's he's standing very straight and saying, um, ask me to be the gatekeeper. I'm I'm here to be the gatekeeper. Did you say when you first came something about your uncle? Yeah, that was an uncle from my mother's side. Oh, it's not the same uncle? No. Okay. The only reason he came through is because he came through right when my mom decided to give me his military like hat because he was the World War II, you know, and a Pearl Heart. Um, so as soon as I got those, he started showing up. Oh, um, okay. So. You had something with his? Yeah. But yeah, this one is interesting. Okay. He's telling me that he feels that he owes you, and that's why, and and not it's not um, it's not that's not a heaviness. It's like you know I owe him, uh, and and I want to help, and so that's the gatekeeper. And I'm asking him. Um, <laughs> a lot. Okay, well that's good to know. So yeah. you know that he knows that. Not me, he owes my dad. Mm-hmm. Like, you know. What he's, what he's saying is you need a strong gatekeeper. Yeah. And so he's appearing in his uniform, very straight. He's appearing, I don't know how old he was when he passed, but he's appearing at the age that he probably served in the military. Mm-hmm. So there's that military strength to him. Mm-hmm. And, um, He's telling me you need a strong gatekeeper. And let me see what else he wants to say. Okay. He's trying to make up. Mm-hmm. Trying to pay up. Yeah, well. They 
were supposed to share after their mother passed away. Supposed to share the house equally, and he took it all. Is he the oldest? Yeah. That's what they do. Well, yeah. Their father was abusive and beat them up, and at some point they kicked him out, and they had to put it under a man, a man's name. I don't know why. And it had to be. It was put under his name. So my dad had no say in it. Yeah. So my dad called him greedy and. Transference. Actually, my dad has transference. Luke sees me as his brother, and my brother, my younger brother, as him. So there's a transference going on. <laughs> so fascinating. This whole thing. Uh, I wondered why he was around. Like what? You know why I got notification before anyone else? Doesn't matter. But I'm not even with that. <laughs> You know, the day, or, you know, guess what, you know, tell your father, you know, tell your father that his brother died, or I'm like, what, you, you know, why are you telling me? Would his, would this uncle would wanted to tell your brother, your father? No. No. They weren't speaking. No. No. Spirit works. There's no coincidence. But why me? I mean, you know. You have karmic ties. Yep. You have karmic ties with him. So know you have a gatekeeper. We have, we're probably were uh, better f friends than anybody else in my family. Everybody that's, else hated them. That's it. We <laughs> sat down and watched Airwolf or whatever, <laughs> you know, the TV show. You had a past life connection with him in another lifetime. I liked him. Yeah. I was the only one, I think. You know, yeah. Everybody else yeah, that's is exactly. Like, it's you know, very clear. That's what it is. Okay. So, Deborah, I owe you everything. Um, my energy is. Does he have any message for me? And then does he have anything to say just to close out, I guess, with me? That he's going to be your gatekeeper. Okay. He's going to protect you. So okay. now you have an answer to that. Of, um, so you just ask him and you tell him that, that I mean, he's seeing. So, so you have to ask, so they can't step in. So you just ask, I please be my gatekeeper. And, and Okay. Yeah, he probably, and I'm not sure. I'm getting that he, that you were brothers in some past lives, and that he was the older brother. In the not past brothers, but some kind of a relationship. They were together in some kind of a relationship. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it could be. Me and him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because you carry it over. Like comrades in arms. That's what I'm getting. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Carry mm -hmm. it over very much. Took a lot from that. This time. Fascinating. Okay, well, that'll help. <laughs> I think, yes. So I'm just going to close the circle. Do we have to be out of the library? But we have until now. Okay. Okay. Um, I just want to thank all the loved ones who came through. Thank you for the love and the light that we share. We are spiritual beings. We are here on earth to have a human experience, to go through the hassle, the sorrow, the joys, the growth as humans, but we are spiritual beings. By staying in touch with our spiritual self, the human self will have a, an easier path. So we close the circle with gratitude and we leave here with the love, the light, the harmony, and the peace that passeth all understanding. And so let it be.